What's up, gang? It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com. Back with my Stamplar, the Harvester build. One of my very first builds updated for update 7 coming in with the Imperial City. I wanted to reroll an Imperial Templar on the DC faction. And I figured it'd be helpful for you guys to come out with a build on what I did, what I found most effective, passive, champion points, everything you need to know while you're leveling your Stamplar to VR1 and beyond. Do you notice my guy carrying a humongous two-hander? Looks sweet, doesn't it? That's Red Guard, yeah. So I started off with two-hander in this build. Now, just for the premise of understanding this, we're gonna start with the two-hander, go to dual wield, and the very end of the game, we're gonna go to bow. So what you need to primarily be concerned with is your two-hander. And the reason why is the Templar needs this major buff from the two-hander via rally right now. You can get it from dual wield, but this is a nice self-heal as well. It does last in 33 seconds, making the ideal buff to get that major, major brutality. So as you can see, I didn't take every single skill, but I took a lot of them. Reason being, the more skills are on your bar, the faster you level that specific skill line. So the very start of the game, you can do bow if you're having trouble surviving, but realistically, you want one ability from each thing in your class. One Aedric Spear, one Dawn's Wrath, one Restoring Light and then one from each weapon that you're gonna use. So one, a two-hander ability, and then even a dual wield ability. So I took twin slashes, didn't even use it, but put on my bar, that way dual wield progressed at the same rate. So obviously, I take the very first ability here, sweeps, and you're morphing into biting jabs. This is your bread and butter that you'll be using pretty much the entire game. Also gives you major savagery, so that, that crit buff that you get in the fighter's guild, well, you can get it here by using jabs every eight seconds. So that's why it's so important to level a two-hander right away so you can complement it with the weapon power. The Dawn's Wrath ability that I took is Reflective Light. This is a lifesaver starting off as a low-level Templar. You're not going to have a whole lot of stamina. You're not going to have a whole lot of passive, so you need something with magic that can kill. This thing is AoE. It's range. It's perfect for a build starting off, but you're not going to use it too much later on. Restoring Light. Um, you'll notice my first bar has Honor the Dead, which is getting a new buff in Update 7, so it's going to be a nice self-heal, like an oh crap moment. So I took that morph, and since I'm a stamina build, and also I have Remembrance, which is a good oh crap ultimate that self-heals you and your allies and reduces damage. But the real reason I took two abilities from this tree early on is to get Repentance. So it's Radiant Aura first, then it's Repentance. Using uh, basically souls of fallen allies, engine guardians, whatever, to give you and allies health and stamina. This is getting a revamp in Update 7, meaning that it's going to scale off your max stamina, not just max magic. It's going to be even more powerful for stamina builds. So you got to get this right away. You kill stuff, you get heals, you get basically infinite stamina. And that's what I did to start off. So the trick is, with your two-hander, obviously you're gonna have that sucker equipped, right? You're gonna unlock this ability. But go, just put two weapons on and get the two-handed, uh, the dual wield ability right away. So walk around, kill a couple of zombies, do a quest, just to get this unlocked right away. Don't take this, wait for still tornado and quick cloak, but just have an ability in your bar. That's gonna take you, these skills will take you about to level 10 or 15, and that's where we get our second bar. At level 15, you get your second your second bar. This is really important to go dual wield right away, unless you're having trouble. If you are switched to boat, get some range, knock those enemies down. But I definitely prefer um, dual wield for this build. The reason why is the passes are conducive to what we're doing, plus it gives you an extra slot on your gear. That's gonna be very, very important end game. And also you get the access to the best AOE in the game probably, which is good old Steel Tornado. Steel Tornado is a range 12.5 meters, essentially a finisher. It's incredibly powerful. And if you see me use it, jumping around, spinning around like a whirling dervish, you just can't stop, it's incredible. And then also biting jabs is still in my bar, why? That major crit buff, and also it's still the best single target ability that I have, so why not use it in single target? And it also can do AOE and stun enemies. Um, but it does come with a high cost, It has a, it's a channel, so you're gonna sit there and channel the sucker. You'll notice I have a two-hander ability on my bar as well. You're gonna get access to the Executioner here pretty early often, and I don't take Uppercut Wrecking Blow because I already have Biting Jab, so I don't find it that useful. And so Executioner is a good stamina-based finisher. Templars have a magic-based finisher, Radiant Oppression, but that's not exactly the, the thing that we want for this build. 
So we're gonna use this as a finisher. If you don't know what finishers are, at around 25% health or so, you're gonna do a lot more damage as their health keeps going low. So it's nice to have this on our back bar just in case we need to finish off a target. Though you can use still tornado as an AOE finisher, but this will do more damage single target. That's on my dual wield bar so I can level those both the same. So here's my Adric Spear ability. My ultimate is Solar Prism. That's a Dawn's Wrath ability, essentially Nova. Damage dealing, it reduces their damage. It's utterly amazing and has a massive synergy. My Restoring Light ability is Repentance. So once I get this on, I really don't take much else in Restoring Light, but I still have one ability on there so I can level up the skill line. And then good old Quick Cloak. Quick Cloak is utterly amazing at Endgame. I got this tip from watching Moving Target's YouTube channel. Um, he had this on, and it, his build are absolutely fantastic for a top end DPS. Moving Target. I'll probably link it in the description. But anyways, he had this Quick Cloak on there because it procs Ravager. And I was just using it just for speed, and I didn't know that. Ravager is the Endgame gear set that we're going to use later on. So if we do stick with Ravager uh, in the future with this, it's a must-have. Plus, it counteracts what Templars don't have, and that's speed. So I love, love me some Quick Cloak. Oh, do we mention AoE reduction too? So in the middle of the battle, this is going to be super helpful for we don't get smoked. Back bar here is my two-hander. And so we're going to go still with Crit Rush as a nice opener. Brawler, though I don't use it too much. The only way I'd use Brawler is while leveling if I need a damage shield. But usually things are dying so fast, it's not even a problem. I do have Quick Cloak on this bar as well because I want it to level up and I want it to hit rank 4 as fast as I can. And then good old Biting Jabs. Now why do I have it on both bars? One, it levels up my Adric Spear line. But remember that once you get something morphed, you're not done with that skill. That thing needs to hit level 4 to get maximum damage. So for me, I want this thing to get level 4 as fast as possible. That way it can hit harder and harder and harder. So once you have it at level four, I guess you could switch it out for something else in the line. Um, and I took these skills just to level up the skill line faster. Spear is amazing, Sunshell is amazing, but we're gonna get that later. And then I have my finisher on here as well, Executioner. If you're having trouble with this build, don't slot Executioner. Uh, instead, put it like instead of Brawler and then go ahead and use Honor the Dead. That's if you're struggling. Usually things are dying so fast that I don't have to do that. And then I do Remembrance as my Restoring Light um, ability on this bar. So you'll notice the current trend is I usually have almost one, almost always one Restoring Light, one Dawn's Wrath, one Adric Spear. So the thing that's missing on this build is the Dawn's Wrath. You can put Power of the Light here instead of Crit Rush if you want to. What this does is it stores up energy and blows up, also reducing their armor, which is really nice, but it's ma it's minor, it's not major. So if you don't want a gap closer, and you're fighting NPCs, they're gonna come to you. Use Power of the Light, and that can go right here. It's up to you, because Dawn's Wrath, we don't need a whole lot of the passives in here. So just a tip, you wanna watch out for those. So after you get this, this will take you quite a ways into the leveling progression, and then we're gonna focus start to start focusing on the high level abilities next. Okay, so now at level 25, you're gonna start getting access to almost every ability and every passive, and this is where the build starts shaping up. You don't really know what you're doing a whole lot, or you can't do it until you get to some of these abilities that you have to have. That's why it's so important to slot those abilities on your bar. So as we progress, we got Power of the Light now, so that's gonna be our gap closer on our dual wield bar. No, you actually don't close the gap with it, but you can use it with your speed boost from Quick Cloak to quickly get to a target. We also have a nice damage shield with Sun Shield, though we may slot this for something else later. So it's a good, good shield, especially if we're gonna be in the mix of combat. It's a good way to save your life if you have extra magic. Since we're not using a whole lot of magic, we'll have plenty of it. And then we have good old Batting Jabs, our main source of single target damage, plus a crit boost, and then we have Steel Tornado. So assuming we don't have all the skill lines leveled up, we wanna slot Remembrance here to level up Restoring Light, and that's it. Close gap, speed boost, protection, single target, AOE, oh crap button. Sounds pretty good, right? Back bar here is the two-hander, and now we got a, we should have enough XP to reach momentum into a rally. So we have an awesome stamina-based self-heal, more weapon damage, and it lasts for 30 seconds, 33. So you're gonna buff on the back bar first, and then go into combat on your dual wield. We also have toppling charge, or focus charge, I haven't got it morphed yet. 
It's a magic base gap closer. And the way I use this is, number one, I have it slotted to level up Adric Spear as fast as I possibly can, because the passes are just amazing. But let's say a boss gets out of range and I am on my dual with Bart and I need to like close the gap without using Power of Light, this sucker works. Plus it doesn't drain my stamina either, so I can get to a target fast. And the reason I want to get to a target fast is the execution phase. Once that target, let's say it's a boss, reaches 25%, I'm gonna start spamming this. Now Steel Tornado does work as an execute, but it's not the best. This is more beneficial for single target executing. So, closing the gap with that, you're buffing with Rally. We've already talked about Repentance. It's gonna give us a minor um, buff, and also we're gonna use it on our back bar for corpses for more self-sustain, and this is kind of a free slot. So what I would like to use this ability, uh, this slot for is abilities or trees that are lagging. So let's say your dual wield is only you know 37. Put another dual wield ability here. Let's say your um, Adric Spear isn't that high. Put an Adric Spear ability here. Or Honor the Dead if you're struggling with this build. This is a slot that's up to you. And then Executioner as well. We have to have an Execute for boss fights, great. And then good old Solar Prison. And that's kind of the build skill-wise. Now what I'm going for long-term is essentially something that can use Biting Jab, single target, AOE Steel Tornado, but it has to synergize well with the gear. The gear is everything, but you can't access it at VR1. So you have to keep on leveling and progressing. So what do you do after this? I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions. After this, essentially all you're doing is focus on getting more skill points, learning your class, trying out different abilities, trying out different armor uh, gear sets, mixing and matching things, try different stuff, see what works for you. But this is what worked for me from level uh, one to VR1 and beyond. But let's talk about passives because those are super important to this build. So I grinded this guy up in nine hours to get to VR1, and I'm gonna be working on getting him to VR14 at some point. And you don't get a whole lot of skill points when you're doing that. So you have to be very particular with your skill points, especially if you maybe get all those sky shards, but you're doing crafting. I'm not doing any crafting on this guy, and I still have to be particular with my skill points. So let's talk about the ones that you really, really want. And the Edric Spear, priority number one is get Burning Light. This thing procs magic damage, even when you're using a stamina-based ability like Biting Jabs. So every time you do that little pokey pokey, like this, pokey pokey, Biting Jabs, you might get a chance to proc this, Burning Light. Also, it's a good thing to recognize this is magic damage, magic damage. So you'll get more of it with the Thermaturge and Champion Points. Thanks Fear Turbo for that tip. Also, Balance Warrior, increase weapon damage by 3%. No one else has that. So getting two points into that early on will increase your weapon damage through the roof. Those two are super important. Yes, you want these two, but not early on. Don's Wrath, really the only thing in Don's Wrath I like um, early on is gaining uh, ultimate using a Don's Wrath ability. So that's Power of the Light. And keeping Power of the Light up constantly will produce a lot of ultimate. And then restoring spirit, so lowering the magic stamina and ultimate cost of everything is really nice as well. But not that essential to our build. And then restoring light, I haven't taken any passes because I'm not having trouble keeping myself alive. I'm not a healer, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so two-hander, I'm not using two-hander for damage, right? So I don't have to take all these crazy passes. What I do have to take is reducing two-hander ability costs. That's important. And then dual wield, you do wanna spend basically all of your points here if you have extra ones. Um, but reduce cost, number one priority. And then bow if you have some extra slots. But realistically, you want medium armor right away. Um, Windwalker, this is your basically regeneration and your reduced cost. Once you get this sucker, wait for agility to get the two points and weapon damage for 12% for wearing five pieces or more. Then go back to dexterity for more crit based on everything you wear and so on. Um, World Magic Fighter's Guild, it's really helpful to put points into Slayer and Banish the Wicked as essentially a lot of these fights are Undead and Daedra. Alliance War we're going to skip and then Imperial. So I don't put too much into health right away, I'd rather have more stamina and health off of attacks but obviously once I get more skill points I'm going to go in there. So just to recap, your number one priority is this Adric Spear Burning Light. Balance Warrior, that's important. Go to medium armor, get the regeneration, reduce cost, it'll make a world of difference. And if you do have champion points, this is where I spent my champion points. 
So on my website, I have the champion point chart, but let's just talk about it. I usually do a 60-40 split between reduced cost and regeneration. That's not a perfect science. It just depends on the context that you play. If you're playing a race with stamina regeneration already as a passive, you're gonna wanna go more into regeneration. Um, if you're playing PVP a lot more and you're using drinks, regeneration. But if you're doing PVE leveling, reduced cost is fantastic, because why? We have repentance. We don't need a whole lot of regeneration because of that one ability. So go with reduced cost warrior. I go tons and tons of points into here. Then I go about a 40% ratio into sand regeneration. And then if you're doing PVP, do tumbling. So if you're not doing PVP, I probably could reinvest those five points somewhere else. But it is helpful if you're dodge rolling. And over on here, you're gonna to go to the ritual tree and put all your points into the mighty. You wanna really max this sucker out. Now. Piercing's great, ignoring physical attacks, more crit damage, but you notice I have points in the Thermiturge. Why? Remember, burning light scales off of magic. Fear Turbo told me. Thank you. Tip. Great. So if you want to get more damage out of your burning light, this is actually worthwhile putting some points in here. Plus poison damage. That's not bad if we're using a bow as well. So think about putting some points there. Moving on, the red trees I don't worry about too much since I'm not doing PvP, but I do like the 120 point uh, unchained passive. So reducing uh, stamina cost of abilities after three seconds of breaking a stun, fear disorient, blah, blah, blah. So that's nice. And then also getting crit, getting health over time is actually pretty helpful, um, even while leveling. So I think these are worth doing. So I just do a split here, Harding Elemental Defender, a 50-50 split. And then you can go to Quick Recovery for increased effectiveness of self-healing. So Repentance gives you a lot more. Um, but that's just basic stuff. And so this is basically how I set up my champion points on this guy. So we're almost done, but I want to talk about some of the basic stuff that I get a lot of questions on over and over um, and clarify a couple things for this build, which is attributes, you know, weapons, um, some of the basic questions that I, I constantly get asked. So race, what race do you want to be and why? Imperial is fantastic because it's the bread and butter of stamina and it has a lot of flexibility if things change in the game later on. So I, I assume it, it's the number one. Red Guard is probably the number one A. You're gonna get a lot of stamina back on attacks. So if you are medium weaving while doing biting jabs, which I'll talk about later, Red Guard is a strong, strong choice. Though if you wanna do straight PVP, think about Bosmer or Khajiit for a lot of stamina recovery in update seven. Attributes. I go all into stamina. At end game, you want about 20,000 20, health, 18,000. You're gonna need a little bit more health than like a Khajiit Archer because you're gonna be in the combat, gonna be up in there. Imperial, that's no problem. So just go full attributes into stamina. No big deal. Vampire Werewolf. You notice I'm not using any vampire or werewolf abilities, so I don't choose to be a vampire and werewolf since that's changing in update seven. Will that change at end game? Very well could because I might PVP as a stamina vampire. Don't know yet, so stay tuned for that. Munda Stones. You're gonna want the warrior for more weapon damage. Try to get that early on. Everyone has access to Seer Adult level 10. So if you can, go in there and get that sucker or travel to a friend at a way shrine. It will make a pretty big damage, uh, pretty big difference in your damage early on. Gear. I haven't talked about that, but realistically, I'm using five piece Hunding's Rage, three piece Ashen Grip, or four piece if I'm on my dual build. So you have seven pieces of armor, and you're going to use five plus a weapon. Um, so that's eight or nine if you're dual build. It's just simple. It's effective. It's the same armor I wear on, wore on my Kaji, and I just transferred it over. Works great. Food, you're gonna want buy stat food, so health and stamina, though some of the top end gamers are using green food to get more stamina, but we're not there yet. Um, and that's pretty much it for the build. Now, I'm gonna release a Dragon Star Arena gameplay video later in the day, so once you wanna see this thing in action, please, please watch that. And I wanna answer one question before I go, and that is, I did my Khajiit Nightblade, and I did my Imperial Templar. What do I like more? And I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I do like the Khajiit Nightblade more. It seems like the Stamplar is more powerful in Endgame. It has better AOE, um, but the Nightblade has a style and flair to it that I like. So I am gonna level up the Nightblade first just because I enjoy it more, 
then the Stamplar again and to VR14. Once I get to VR14 or 16, depending on when the update comes out, I'm gonna update you guys on what gear, how I tested it, and what produced the best results for PVE and PVP. I might even come with an Imperial City specific video, so stay tuned. And once again, thanks for watching. You probably noticed I changed my volume a little bit, tried to trank it up and do something different. Please comment if you liked or hated this. Thank you.